no one ever came to Bear's house. It had always been that way. And Bear was quite sure he did not like visitors. He even had a sign, no visitors allowed. Here's the Bear's front door with the no visitor sign on the front door. Here's the story. One morning, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. The bear looked toward the front door. It's a great bear. He lives in a house that has blue walls. I love blue walls. And this is his kitchen. And he looks toward the front door where there was a tapping on the front door. When he opened his door, there was a mouse, small and gray and broad eyed. No visitors allowed, Bear said, pointing to the sign. Go away. He closed the door and went back to the business of making his breakfast. So here's the bear opening the front door, seeing the bright-eyed little gray mouse. And there he goes back to the business of making his breakfast. This bear does not want visitors. So he set out one cup and one spoon, but when he opened the cupboard, to get one bowl, guess what happened? I want you to see his one cup on his one table with the one chair. When he opened the cupboard, there was the mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. There's the bear, alarmed that the mouse is right there on the top shelf of his cupboard. I told you to leave, cried the bear. Perhaps we could just have one spot of tea, said the mouse. Out, commanded the bear. Most sorry, said the mouse. I'll be going now. Bear showed him to the door and shut it firmly. There's the bear in his apron for making breakfast. And he has the tail of the mouse in his hand and he's showing him the door. This bear does not want visitors. Then he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the bread drawer for one slice of bread, there was the mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. I love this. Here's the bread drawer and the bear opens it, and there standing on the loaf of bread is the mouse. Small, gray, and bright-eyed. But the bear is not bright-eyed. He's got a frown on his face, scowling at the mouse. Unbelievable! roared the bear. Away with you, vamoose. I do like a bit of cheese, said the mouse. Bear pointed a rigid claw toward the door. Yes then, here I go, said the mouse. Farewell. And the mouse 
whisked out the door. So there's the bear roaring at the mouse, showing him the door, pointing, and there's the mouse leaving. This time, the bear shut the door very firmly and locked it tight. He locked the windows, too, for good measure. It's the bear locking up the door, the bear locking up his windows. He does not want visitors. Then once again, he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the fridge to get one egg, here's the bear, very happy to be alone again and rid of the mouse going toward his refrigerator to get an egg, one egg, for his breakfast, for himself alone. There was the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed, of course. Be gone, roared the bear. Look at this bear. He is roaring. You can look down his throat. He is roaring so loudly. Wow, he does not want any visitors. A crackling fire? Sss, Richard the mouse. This is impossible, intolerable insufferable cried the bear shaking with anger and disbelief terribly sorry murmured the mouse now you see me now you don't i'm gone and the mouse looked very sorry indeed while he waited for bear to unbolt the door to let him out again Here's the bear just saying, this is insufferable. He's still on gun on his breakfast making apron. And now he's showing the bear out once again. And the mouse said, you have to unbolt the door so that I can get out. This time, before he went back to the business of making his breakfast, bear shut the door very, 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 Firmly locked it, boarded the windows shut, my, stopped up the chimney, my, and even plugged the drain in the bathtub. I want you to see him on his hands and knees, covering over the chimney, stopping up the bathtub, and here he is bolting the windows boarding the windows shut. Carefully, Bear set about the business of making his breakfast. He opened the cupboard. No mouse. <sighs> he opened the bread drawer. Nothing. <sighs> he is so relieved that the bread drawer is empty of a mouse. And also he's really relieved that the cupboard has no mouse in it and this time he opened the fridge mouse free yes indeed the refrigerator has lots of food in it but no mouse he even lifted the lid to the tea kettle and what happened then there was the mouse <laughs> small and gray and well, you know the rest. Bright-eyed. Bear fell to the floor and wept. I give up! 
he blubbered. You win. I am undone. Oh my, look at those big tears coming from the bear. He has really been overwhelmed, undone by the mouse and the mouse's persistence to be a friend. So sorry, said the mouse, but perhaps if I could have just a bit of cheese and a cup of tea, and do you think we can unstopper the chimney and have a nice fire? Bear blew his nose with a loud honk. <sighs> but then you must go, he sniffled. No visitors allowed. You have my word, said the mouse. Oh, the bear is sitting. He is feeling so sorry for himself. He's blowing his nose on his apron. He's giving in. I guess he's gonna have to have a little visit with the mouse. So Bear unshuttered and unboarded the windows, unlocked the door, unstoppered the chimney, and unplugged the drain. He did all those unthings including making a nice little fire in this fireplace. What happened then, I wonder? It's the turn of the story. He brought out two plates of cheese and two teacups, and he made a crackling fire in the fireplace for two sets of toes, the mouse warmed his feet and nibbled and sipped, and Bear did too. They sat for a long while. The clock in Bear's house ticked loudly. Tick tock, tick tock. Look at the bear sitting with his feet propped up on his ottoman getting them warm by the fire. And there is his visitor, the mouse, on his ottoman, warming his feet by the same fire, drinking his cup of tea while the bear's drinking his cup of tea. Oh, this is getting interesting. Bear cleared his throat. <clears> throat> The mouse looked most attentive. No one had ever been attentive to the bear before. The fire is nice, Bear announced. Lovely, said the mouse. No one had ever said Bear's fires were lovely. I can do a handstand, said the bear. Very impressive, exclaimed the mouse. Would you look at what's going on? Here's the bear accepting a compliment for the first time, and then he, encouraged by that, does a handstand. Look at that impressive handstand. And the mouse is complimenting him on the handstand. Wow, do you think this bear was hungry? for friendship and attention and encouragement. Now here comes a really neat picture. Bear told a joke. The mouse laughed heartily. No one had ever laughed at Bear's jokes before. Bear began to think of another joke. Look at the smile on Bear's face. I just love that smile. And look at how the mouse is doing a belly laugh at the Bear's joke. Well, the mouse set down his teacup and Bear quickly lifted up the teapot. There's plenty more, he said. Here's the Bear 
wanting to serve the mouse some more tea. What is going on? Something's changing inside the bear's heart. So sorry, said the mouse. Most kind, but I must be on my way. Really, you needn't to go, said Bear. I am off, said the mouse, springing up from his chair. Wait, cried the bear. But the mouse stepped out the door. Toodaloo, said the mouse. <gasps> so the mouse is waving goodbye. This time he persists in walking out the door. The bear waves him goodbye. A leaf is falling from the tree, so it must be autumn. Then what happens? Don't go, wailed the bear, throwing his body across the path. But I gave you my word, said the mouse, pointing at the no visitors sign on the bear's front door. There's the bear trying to body block the mouse from leaving his house because he's enjoyed their having breakfast together. Oh, that sign, said the bear, pulling down the sign and tearing the sign up that said, no visitors, that sign's for salesmen, not for friends. Here's the bear tearing up the sign that he had on his front door, which just a bit before was for everybody. But now he said the sign was for salesmen, not for friends. Not for friends, asked the mouse, small, gray, and bright-eyed. Bear nodded. The mouse's bright eyes glowed brighter, and Bear smiled. Look at that friendship. The bear smiling. And the mouse, bright-eyed, is holding his hand. They have become friends. And the bear is inviting him inside. And then the bear and the mouse are seated at the breakfast table. And bear said most politely, do you like one lump or two? I like two, said the mouse, and Bear agreed. And here are the new friends sitting at the breakfast table having another cup of tea. And that's the story. I love stories about how people change when one loves them than the other, when there's friendship. And then they seal that with something to drink or eat. It's an old and deep story about how God makes friends with all of us. And a lot of people tell a story that God made friends with us through a really great guy named Jesus. And there are other people who tell stories about God making friends with them in other ways. But the point in every wonderful religion is that God is waiting to make friends with us. So, thanks for joining me. Let's have a moment of prayer. I'll ring the singing bowl.
Let us pray. We thank you, God, for friendship and how friendship comes and changes our hearts. How friendship encourages us, affirms us, helps us be who we are. We thank you, God, that you are our friend. You've been our friend through Jesus. You've been through our, our friend through so many other wise leaders. Help us have a heart of friendship and make friends throughout the world and find ways for all of us to have tea together. All these things we pray in the name of love, friendship making love. Amen. Thanks for being with me. See you next Sunday night at 645. Have a great week and don't forget to wear your mask. And here is a mouse saying, well, I think I have a mouse saying, bye-bye.